have you heard about all this natty stuff? What natty stuff? It's time we know who is natural and who isn't. It's a natty verified challenge. Hashtag natty verified. Fake natties screwing and lying with people. Are you natural? Time to answer the question once and for all. Hey, it's Al here with... Extra! Ordinary Athletes here helping you fit fitness even into the busiest of lives. So be sure to check out our other videos and playlists. Hit that like button, that notification button, that subscription button, all the buttons. It really helps us out and helps us grow. And if you have general questions for us, remember to leave them in the comment section because we are planning to do a Q&A video with them. But for today, we are answering the question everyone wants to know. Is Exaway Natty taking the Keto Body Challenge? <laughs> And as you may suspect, given how jacked we all look, we've been getting pummeled with questions from fans, always asking, are you natty? Do you juice? I mean, just look at our comment section. And we get it, we get it. We know where these questions are coming from. How can you not look at great feats of strength like this? Or this? Or this? and not be like, oh, they must be juicing. It's the only way. Yeah, so we're gonna take the test today. We're gonna pee in this cup and find out the answer to that question once and for all. I hate peeing in those cups. Too bad, they need to know if you're natty or not. Okay, and once we've proved that we're all natty, then you're gonna have to buy all our products. And if you're wondering how we stay so ripped even though we're so natty, well, that's because we don't listen to those fitness experts that are like, oh, progressive overload, nutritional and caloric intake, and like other big words like that, blah, no. blah, blah. We said screw that long time ago, yeah. and all we do is we stay in a constant anabolic state. All day. 24-7 anabolic. Anabolic! And the, and the way we do it is through our own personal blend of BCAAs, BCAAs. and the perfect fasted cardio routine. Fast all day. Both of which go on sale as soon as we prove that we're natty. Four easy payments of $1,876.52. Four easy payments over the course of four days. And one complicated one! Yeah. I mean, I'm so ripped. Girls be coming up to me on the beach all the time, asking if they can grate cheese on these washboard abs. That gotta be true. Now it's finally time. Now we're gonna prove once and for all how natty we are. All right, Come on. Go. But only those who join us on Patreon can follow us in here. Okay, obviously that was all a joke. We don't even have a Patreon page. And clearly no one has been questioning our natty status. Wait, what? <laughs> and obviously we're not anabolic 24-7. But we did want to jump in and talk about this whole are they natty craze from the keto body challenge to kenny ko's entire channel there seems to be a really big obsession with this over the past couple years so first off we need to acknowledge that we understand that the question of whether someone is natty or not is an important one and there are two reasons for this the first reason involves understanding the limits of human physiology, which is of particular interest when it comes to various sports. We want to know what's the fastest someone can run, or what's the longest someone can swim. And in similar thought, it is of interest to know how much muscle the human body can build naturally. Now, fake natties? They ruin this exploration for us. Now the second and likely more prominent reason of why the fake natty question is important relates to trust. We need to know who to trust, who to follow, and we need to recognize those individuals who are just trying to sell their BS products. And there's a lot of BS out there. Pre-workout gummy bear. Carnitine is another ingredient you want to get post-workout. I'm always sipping on some branch chain amino acid. Now, separate from all the nonsense being sold in the fitness industry, fake natties make the problem way worse. When someone has a phenomenal physique and they lie about achieving it through natural means, they give off the impression that all you need is their supplements or their products or whatever else they are selling. And it tricks people into buying whatever products they are selling, even though they're completely useless. So yes, we do recognize the fake natty problem. 
And furthermore, we get that there are a lot of body image issues going on out there, and we're actually going to make an episode that more seriously addresses body image. But for now, we recognize that body insecurities pervade throughout so many of our minds. And I'll admit for me, I had my own body insecurity issues when I first started to train. I grew up very, very skinny and often kept hearing about it. So when I first started to train, my obsession and my own body dysmorphia was associated with just wanting to be bigger and keep, keep getting bigger. And so I would often look in the mirror and think, oh, I'm not big enough. And it's different for every person. Every individual might have their own particular insecurities that are associated with who they are and how they grew up in their body. For Kat, she has an obsession with always wanting to be stronger. Christina's always wanted to be a little trimmer. And so we all go through this together, even if the insecurities are a bit different for each one of us. But online fitness has really only exacerbated this body image and body insecurity problem. So many of us XOAers look online or look in magazines and we end up getting down on ourselves because we see that we don't look like those images that are being portrayed. This is actually one of the reasons why we started this whole channel. We were hoping to give a healthier representation of what ordinary people can actually accomplish when it comes to their body composition. Not people who live in the gym or have an entire team or camera crew who help them look good in images on Instagram or in videos, but people with normal lives. We're talking people who have regular 9 to 5 sedentary, often desk jobs, or people who have a really hectic, busy schooling schedule with exams and tests always popping up, or people who have a very demanding family life with a bunch of stressors and obligations that they have to meet. It's for all of you guys out there, who we've been dubbing our XOAers, that we make this channel. That's why we don't care that we're not the most jacked up people on YouTube. It's kind of our whole point. But there are so many people out there, especially in the online fashion and fitness world, who can really skew our perceptions about what's normal and what's healthy. And they end up contributing to a large extent to our body insecurity problems and our dysmorphias. And the fake natties out there really ratchet up this problem. As if the photoshopping, the airbrushing, the lighting, the contouring, etc, etc wasn't already enough, a fake natty can really set up unrealistic and largely unattainable expectations of what we think we should be looking like. This has led to fitness becoming more and more conceptually severed from health and becoming far more intertwined just purely with aesthetics. And certainly we here view overall health as needing to be the main goal of the game. But despite all those good reasons as to why we should be concerned about fake natties, we also think it's become a weird online obsession. We started to care way too much about who's natty and who isn't natty, and certainly a lot of YouTubers have made their entire career based on the drama that comes from calling out who's a fake natty. And honestly, it's kind of getting to the most ridiculous point where in the comment sections of videos, you now see people being called out for being a fake natty, even when they just have like a reasonable fit physique from lifting reasonable regular person weights. Awesome, feeling good today. <laughs> You're clearly juicing. Huh? ourselves, do we need to care this much about who's natty and who isn't, who's telling the truth and who's lying? What's actually important is that we look at ourselves first. People online are always going to cheat to try to make money. Claim that they're 4% body fat with massive biceps so that you buy their products even though they're juicing. And even real natties often distort their photos to make them look as flattering and unrealistic as possible. Thanks Instagram! But instead of always trying to figure out who is and isn't tricking us, Let's look to ourselves and ask, why do we even need to care? Can we personally get ourselves to the point where we're just not susceptible to their tricks anymore? Where we aren't as susceptible to the types of image issues that the online fitness world contributes to? Let's be honest with ourselves, set our own realistic goals, and not base those goals on what people in fitness magazines and online look like. Instead, base your goals on what's healthiest for you and where you're at in your own personal life. And if you choose to concern yourself with that, you'll see that this whole natty craze will start to matter less and less. So there you have it, everyone. If you agreed with us about this fake natty craze, or if you just really enjoyed our antics at the beginning of the video, remember to hit that like button and share this video. And remember to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on our XOA perspective on any new and upcoming topics. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.